Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, Stephanie Frugier and here. And the Lord led me to watching a couple different YouTube videos, uh, particularly by Bill Snowblin. And he was teaching on spiritual warfare. Well, I'm kind of correlated with my thoughts today, earlier today, because the Lord also led me to go into, um, I guess what some would call like a mega church. This morning, um, I've heard a lot about it. I've never been there until this morning, and I went in, and there was literally thousands, thousands of people there, and they hosted three different services. So, and the sermon was, I thought it was good. It was beneficial. Um, it was a bit secular, but applicable. Um, it dealt directly with things that I've been dealing with in life, and um so I'm not I'm not here to like bash the church or, or the people or the preacher or anything like that because I mean their mission in their mission statement you know they they believe in Jesus Christ's death and resurrection and and um they they believe in in biblical principles um but I was I was sitting there among like all these thousands of people and it didn't really feel um, spirit filled in that church um they didn't open it up with prayer um there was like two songs played and the band was awesome but there was no real like group worship going on um and i couldn't help but sit there and think you know with like my occult background and understanding like or having some understanding of like the demonic realm and um, the things, you know, of spiritual warfare, I couldn't help but sit there and think, you know, what if these thousands of people who were believers in Jesus Christ, I assume the majority of them, um, what if they were taught spiritual warfare? I mean, how many of them honestly know about, uh, the demonic realm or, or the effects of the occult or the new age and, you know, astrology horoscopes and you know um tarot cards and and angel cards and contacting your angels or you know how many people simply just don't know this stuff but what if i couldn't help but think what if these thousands of people were made aware of it according to what the bible says and we're taught spiritual warfare how powerful you know would the body of christ become in our in our individual lives and, and as a body if if preachers and churches not only you know taught things about everyday life but taught spiritual warfare because everything in this world originates from the spirit world first and then it manifests you know physically so whatever we have going on spiritually directly affects every aspect of our life um so yeah um i just wanted to say something about that because it, it was just on my heart today because i i've never been to a church that big with that many people and and you know i was surprised to not not feel the spirit there but i know that it's it, it's not the people it's not the preacher they're doing what they're you know what they're called to do at this time but i think there's like a, a breakthrough if you will i don't really like that whole terminology but for lack of a better word i think there's a a breakthrough coming in the body of christ as far as uh returning the body of christ and the true church of jesus christ um back to how it was like in the book of acts when when you know the followers of jesus christ were doing what they were supposed to be doing casting out devils healing the sick you know using the gifts that god gives each and every single believer we all have spiritual gifts every one of us and how beneficial would it be if we empowered each other among the thousands <laughs> Just a thought. Satan is assaulting the church like never before. We see spiritual leaders falling. We see a rise in divorce among Christian leaders. We see false doctrines spreading through the church like wildfire, like leaven, if you will. Why is this happening? Well, I believe that 
what Satan has been trying to do is steal the weapons of our warfare. And in order to do that, he has to take away our one offensive weapon. And that, of course, is the sword of the spirit. A key issue in all the talk and writing about spiritual warfare, and believe me, I have read probably every book, and I've even written one, about spiritual warfare that's out there. And most Christians understand that they have authority over the demonic realm. They understand that they have authority over the lying and deceitful spirits that plague us from all sides. However, what does this really mean in context? What does this mean in practice? Where do they get their authority? And that's an important question. Um, because you see, that's what Satan is going to ask you. Otherwise, you're going to end up like the Jewish exorcists. I said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who the heck are you? Now, contrary to popular belief, an antichrist is not someone who is apparently against Christ. An antichrist is a substitute Christ. In 1 John 2.23, 2, 2.22 and 23, we read, Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. And this is an even more important passage. In 1 John 4, 1 to 3, John tells us a very important thing. Beloved, try not, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye, that ye know ye the Spirit of God, Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God, and this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Now, that's exactly the problem with the space aliens and their gospel. They do not confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus warned of false Christ. In Matthew 24, 24, as did Paul in 2 Corinthians 11, 4, he said, For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might bear well with him. Indeed, the whole essence of all of these cults, especially the Mormons, the Jehovah Witnesses, the New Agers, and so on, is they offer a nearly perfect counterfeit of Jesus Christ. Part of the reason the church of Jesus Christ, the true church, has been so reluctant to confront these spiritual warfare issues head on. Let me tell you, that's really true. I've talked to so many pastors that I think they've got lace in their underwear. I mean, they are scared to death of this stuff. I mean, we out west especially, I mean, I think we got more people with guts around here, but you know, out west we would have hundreds of people coming to us, and they would say, their pastors are afraid of me, their pastors are afraid of demons, their pastors don't know what to do with the devil, or else they don't believe the devil exists. What the heck is going on here? Well, I believe that the spiritual warfare issues that were involved have become as big as they have because the, the leadership of our churches has been allowed themselves to be defamed, declawed, or dare I say it, spiritually gelded by an antichrist spirit which has pervaded the highest levels of Christian pulpits and academia. Thus the issue of spiritual authority involves how to take back that ground that Satan has gained. We have some Christian churches that have removed or want to throw out onward Christian soldiers because it's too militant. Or they don't want to have power in the blood in the hymnal anymore because it's slaughterhouse religion. We can nod our heads and smile and we can say, oh, we'd never fall for that. I mean, you know, we're too tough for that. We'd never we'd fall, fall for, for that, that one. But yet we are told that we are being sold today an infinitely smoother con job and we've become very nice, soft, sleepy Christian. 